Uh, 18-4 to Australia. The, them pesky Aussies got us at the back end of the game again. Yeah, it was um, it was a good game. I thought it was quite a quite a good game. Um, you, England started well, didn't they? But I think Australia gradually got in, got more and more into the game, and uh, and just sort of wound, um, ground England down. I thought the score flattered Australia a little bit at the end. Obviously, they had that intercept try sort of at the end. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, you probably act the sort of score you'd expect maybe from that sort of game. And um, I have to admit, I was a little bit worried after about 20 minutes because everything in the first 20 minutes sort of went England's way, didn't it? We scored with the first proper proper yeah. use. Then the Aussies started piling on the pressure. Defence was holding, though, despite conceding all those dropouts. And then it was almost as if everybody reached 20 minutes and it kind of like they hit a brick wall, didn't they? Now, I don't know about the wall of white. It was the brick wall, wasn't it, for England? Yeah, I think um, I think they defended quite well. The line defence was was pretty good, and um, they were tackling well. And then obviously Australia got the two, you know, maybe the two tries, and um, you know, off a couple of bad plays. It's got to be said, you know, one of the I think it was the, one of the tries came off the back of a bit of a loose pass from Widdop, and um, and then obviously it was that penalty call. Um, Did you? Th- there weren't a lot of penalties within this game, were there? Which uh, I actually enjoyed the fact that they were letting it flow, even though it had me shouting at the television. I don't know about you at home, but it had me at the television standing up and shouting, "That's a high tackle around his head." Yeah, I mean, if you watch NRL, there's a lot of um, you don't see loads of penalties. You see a lot of completed sets. You know, um, you see a lot of six tackle kicks, and um, you know, from quite deep. Whereas in Super League, I don't think you see that very often. You don't. You don't often see a, a period of a game go where there's a team stuck in their own half, they kick long, then the other team goes stuck in their own half and they kick long. Whereas in the NRL, you see that quite a bit. Um, and then, obviously, there wasn't, like I say, there wasn't loads of penalties, but then there's two penalties in the game that both went against England that ultimately were, were pivotal to the game. The first one leading to that second try, was it? And then, obviously, the one towards the end, which effectively ended the game as a contest. Yeah, it was it, for twelve four. It was basically all Lachlan giving away a penalty line in the rut winter and getting caught on the wrong side. Yeah, and then uh, was Elliot Whitehead trying to pull the ball out? Yeah, and obviously, well, I mean, for one, he retained possession of the ball for the second one, and then for the first one, there was a very similar one with uh, Jermaine McGilvery when um, when Lomax sort of sold him down the river with a bad pass, didn't he? And, and McGilvery got up and tried to play the ball and the, the defender was still on the floor. and, and He, he played a, it into him, didn't he? Which yeah, in Super League, yeah. they'd give a penalty for that, wouldn't they? I think the referee's argument was that it was a dominant tackle and it was like, well, you know, how could it have been a dominant mm. tackle? Yeah, it was a good hit, but he was well behind the rook and it was just like, you know... I mean, he was having a bit of debate about, you know, the rubber, an Australian referee giving the rub of the green to, to Australia and I'm sure... I know Ian Smith, was uh, the former Super League referee, was chirping in with it. Um you know, it wasn't a case of us questioning the integrity of the referee, but it, it just having an Australian referee referee Australian matches opens you up to that debate mm. as to whether they're being fair or not. It's like that whole can you referee your hometown club thing that's going yeah, on and, in, in Super the, League yeah, and over here, isn't you know, it? And it? The whole thing, it came back to Steve Ganson, I think it was, who, who first raised it, wasn't it? Because it was like he couldn't get Challenge Cup finals and Super League Grand Finals because St. Helens were already in it, were mm. always in it. And it was like, well, okay. But so what? If the best players, if the best player is Scottish, he's never going to play in a World Cup final. Hmm. You know, it's just tough. You've got well, you could concerned. you could turn it around into football, can't you? And Georgie Best. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's tough. Um, I don't I don't care if the best referee in the world can't referee the the World Cup final because he's Australian. Get the second best in the world or the third best. Just get someone who, you know, you can't. There's no. There, there can be no questions over. Hmm. Over the integrity, and you know, I'm not saying that there is any questions over is it Matt Chetchin's integrity or anything like that, but it just opens you up to the questions that you just don't need to be. It's something else to debate that you don't need yeah, to debate. Like, uh, could you imagine the football World Cup final being England against Spain and them having an English referee? No, I can't imagine that. England's well, never going to win another football World Cup, are they? There's too well, many foreigners over here, just like foreign halfbacks, which is my big bugbearer, as you know, through this show. Where you've got hashtag player pool, I've got hashtag foreign halfbacks. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so here we go. There is there is some branding. I'll have to give it a whirl, won't I? Just excuse me. Just just carry on, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
Um, we've had a comment through, let me just see, this has come through from Martin. Um, I think we discussed this, the three penalties, two at crucial stages. There you go. Dave banned in that. <laughs> I don't know if you looked after with that on than you did before. Well, it's, it's useful, it's going to be useful for when we do our outside broadcasters. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, yeah. Um, I'll yeah. take that off now. I see, but I'm, I don't mind making a fool of myself. Yeah, well, someone's got to have it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Martin saying about the three penalties, two against the, at crucial stages. Um, you know, and like we've discussed about that already, haven't we? About there wasn't many penalties, but the two at crucial times. Um, you know, and had he, had he maybe penalties that certain players would get away with in Super League? Uh, yeah, yeah, because he, he does often get away with that yeah, type of stuff, so, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Or Lachlan in particular, with yeah, that, so, that sort of leaving leaving part of his body in the rook and mm-hmm. getting on the wrong yeah. side of it. But I mean, it was one of them. I was thinking, well, are you, I suppose it's it's quite tongue in cheek, but are you going to beat um, are you going to beat Australia twice? You've only got to beat him once, really, haven't you? Yeah, so that's it. If you're going to beat him once, do you want to beat him in the first game or do you want to beat him in the in the final? Well, the key's now getting to that final, isn't it? You know, I mean, I noticed that uh, we had a, a comment off Declan as well. He already thinks it's nailed on for a, an Australia-New Zealand final. Well, people, We've not even seen New Zealand yet, though, because, I mean, yeah, they're a much weakened I mean, side, aren't they, than what's been in the past. To be honest, it'd be nice to see someone shake it up, and I know everyone's been talking about Tonga and, and, and you know, on paper looking a lot stronger. Never yeah, mind that, Ireland. Well, well, yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to see somebody mix it up a little bit and um, and make a change. And... <laughs> Neil's responded, Benny off crossroads. Yeah, that's what's just what that's the look that I was He's looking for. Face for radio, <laughs> we we'll use that as a way of plugging his commentary tomorrow at the, uh, yeah. the National Conference League finals over at Widmer. So uh, make sure you tune into that. Um, so if you didn't see it yesterday, Martin Ridgard signed for Featherstone. Featherstone announced it in the typically professional manner, manner that Featherstone do with a nice picture of him holding a scarf with John Duffy. Um, you know, everything's fine. You know, you sort of thought, you expected it because he got farmed out of Lee last year on loan to Huddersfield, which was one of the most bizarre deals of last season. And then up pops a statement from Derek Beaumont, basically kicking off that Ridyard hadn't told them or something or other, basically saying that it was courtesy for them to announce it at the same time and... They were being courteous to him by not announcing this other half back, and I'm just thinking, well, hang on. Last season, you struggled. You found out this local lad who's been a pivotal player for five years. Oh, he's, he's been brilliant since he's come through the door, basically. Well, exactly. So it's from it's like, 2009, he's been that, he's been well, in so that first I mean, team. So you're looking the best part of ten years, and all of a sudden, whatever I don't know what happened, but Lee have hardly been blessed with half backs last season, and at, at one point. They've decided to farm Ridyard out. He's gone to Huddersfield, who were actually lower than Lee, I think, at the time he went. And you're like, and I, you know, from an outsider, I'm thinking, well, why would you do that? Because they're strengthening a team that ultimately then hmm. got into the top eight. Well, arguably, he saved their season, didn't he? Because they were going nowhere. I mean, you know, we've, we've both spoken at various points over the year the fact that he looked like Dead Man Walking, yeah, didn't Rick he, Stone, the, Rick yeah. Stone? And you're just like, and I'm thinking, well, why would you do that? So then, So then now... You've got to the point where he's obviously returned, you know, obviously we've talked about next season. Lee have obviously made him some sort of offer. But then if he's gone and taken another offer, then then that's, that's surely up to him. I, I was a bit disappointed. I think, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I can understand why Derek Beaumont might be miffed that he wanted to announce it at the same time, whatever, because he's a long-serving player or whatever. But the way I think Ridyard's being treated... Or the way it's not as if he's played every game for Lee last season. No, he only played five five you know games. I mean? It's not like he's played every game and then it's been public that they've offered him a deal. It was just I, I just think for me that was the thing where okay, Derek, be privately a bit pissed off about it, but don't be issuing a statement like that. I mean, got to put an eighteen certificate on that now because you've you've let your language slip there. Sorry, but. but